Hello everyone, my name is Codemaster Jamal and today I'm going to be showing you how you can make your very own 2D touches for your own 3D games. I won't be covering any material on how to get started with painting your own 2D textures. However, I will leave a link at the top of this video for my previous video in order to help you get to speed. Before I go into covering any material, I want to correct myself by creating a few clear definitions so that no one will get confused. The first is how I interchangeably use the word tile to refer to textures. Here's where I will correct myself by providing some self-definitions for these terms. A texture is a 2D image that is meant to represent a surface or substance in computer graphics. A tile is a flat 3D plane that a texture has been applied to. I meant to define these two definitions as I know a lot of newbies tend to get confused for the way I use them interchangeably in the first video. I won't be doing that anymore and for now I'll be sticking with the term textures for everything else. Now before we go on to the texture painting side of this video, I want to spend some time discussing the role of two. Thanks to a Facebook group member, I was able to expand on this rule a bit more. You see, the whole point of the rule of two is that it's meant to optimize the performance of your computer graphics, and that it's a lot easier for a computer to divide by two, and thus any number that is a product of two gives the best performance. Also, as long as the width and height is a product of two, you will have the best performance. So that means you could have dimensions like 16 by 32 or 1024 by 128, and it wouldn't matter. Now that we've finished discussing that, let's move on to today's lesson. Today's lesson will be about how I painted sand textures from an indie game Virtual Monsters. I will provide a video so that you can see for yourself how I applied this type of texture to my game. To begin, we will start off by searching for some Photoshop brushes. Remember I said you can use DeviantArt.com or Brashizi.com, just to name a few places, but you are free to download your own brushes from anywhere you think is legit. Just please remember that downloading from unknown or sketchy sources may result in malware and other viruses. So please be safe when surfing the web. This time around, we are going to be looking for a specific type of brushes. You can still use the smoke brushes that we downloaded in the last video. However, in order to really get that gritty sand look, we will need to search up splashes, cracks, and splatters. The reason for this is that we cannot simply search up sand textures and expect to get the best results. Trust me, I know this. I tried it myself and I really wish there was one brush we could use to create our texture, but instead we need to use a mix of different brushes in order to create this effect on our canvas. I'll let you pick your own brushes, however, I'll also include a list of the brushes that I personally use when texture painting for my game. For the rest of this video, I'll be recording in full screen mode in order to show you exactly what brushes I use. I can't entirely remember where I got the brushes, but for the most part, I believe I got this specific set of brushes from Brashizi. So everything I have can be found and downloaded for free. I'll make sure to mention the names of all the brushes that I use so that you can look it up for yourself and hopefully you'll be able to find that specific set. I'm fairly certain they can all be found on Brashizi.com. The overall concept for sand textures is different from grass textures. In fact, it's the exact opposite. You see, with grass textures, we select four different shades of green and then we work backwards, starting with the darkest color and then painting until we got to the lightest color. For our sand texture, however, we are going to do the opposite. We are going to start with the lightest color and expand on it until we get to the darkest color. As I said in the previous video, if you want a specific color for your game, please find a screenshot of another game or movie or feel free to use my own texture. I know that deciding on what colors to use can be very difficult when you've just started with painting. For all the newbies, I recommend you use an image as a reference. For this example, you will only need one color to start off with as a base. Sand is typically beige, pale orange, light brown, or yellow in color. I'm going to provide a list of colors and their hex codes so that you can load them into your own editing software. You only need one color, so make sure to pick one. Any of these colors will be fine, but I'm going to go ahead and use F5, F5, DC. First, let's start by creating a 1024 by 1024 canvas. Unlike before, we won't actually need a second canvas to store all our colors onto. However, if you feel like making one, feel free to do so. Next, we need to go to our texture canvas. On the canvas, press W to put the canvas into wrap mode, and then press F to select the fill tool. Granted, I'm assuming by now you've selected what color you want to use, so we're going to go ahead and fill the entire layer with this color. Then make a new layer and press B to select our brush option. There is an icon in the top left corner of the toolbar with a brush icon. Select it and a menu will pop up. From there, we will select predefined and then scroll down to our brush. If you haven't already done so, you can also use this menu to load your brushes into Krita. The first brush we are going to select is a brush called Bristles Circle Medium. We will also change the color of our brush by making it darker slightly. 
Not so dark that it contrasts completely with the background we just created, but dark enough to tell the difference between the background and our brush. That should be good. Next, we are going to use a technique similar to the one we used in the previous video. It's a bit of random clicking. Make sure you are on the new layer and simply just click on different parts of the canvas until the entire canvas is filled up. You can leave a few spaces here or there and don't be afraid to click twice in the same spot. Just make sure you don't overpaint onto the canvas. Now let's create a new layer and this time we are going to select a different brush. This brush is called Chalk Sparse. On the third layer, we're just going to do a light brushing onto the surface. We want to cover the layer, but we also want to leave a bit of space for detail later. The next step is to create a new layer and move this layer directly below the layer we just painted onto. Then we need to change the color of our brush to a slightly darker beige. This time you want it to be darker than the last color we selected, but not so dark that the contrast is drastic. Just enough to tell the difference between the two. From here on out, this will be the last color we use. We will also only be creating layers underneath the last layer we painted on. So with this new layer selected, we will use the same brush to paint the areas that we left out last time. This is when you can start to see the detail and the texture come out. For the very last step, we are going to create one last layer, but make sure it's right underneath the top layer. This layer is actually the most important. We are going to change our color, but instead we will be selecting a new and final brush. This last brush is known as scales, and we only need to use this brush to touch up a few areas. The secret to creating the sand effect is not to overuse this brush. You really only need one or two stamps of this brush on your texture in order to make it look like a sand texture. However, this is what really brings out the detail of the texture. Once again, when it comes to this brush, make sure you don't overdo it because it can ruin the effect. And with that, I believe we have everything. The last thing we have left is to save our texture and load it into our Unity project. And there we go. You've just created a sand texture for your game. Once I loaded the texture into my FPS game that I've been working on, this is what it looks like. Pretty nice, huh? Well, I guess this will be all for now. If you enjoyed watching this video, please feel free to subscribe to the channel for more awesome tutorials. Keep making games. Till next time, this is Codemaster Jamal, and I'm signing out. <laughs> Season 2!